Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Another chapter in the Oxford school shooting comes to a close. Why you were running away from your son and your responsibilities. I was forced to do the worst possible thing a parent could do. I was forced to say goodbye to my Madison. James and Jennifer Crumbly sentenced to prison for their role in the tragedy. James and Jennifer Crumbly are going to spend at least the next seven and a half years in prison. Let's take you through what happened at today's sentencing. That number comes after Judge Cheryl Matthews sentenced both of them to 10 to 15 years behind bars, but gave them credit for time served. But before the sentence was handed down, the families of the victims got their chance to address the pair directly. We have this story covered from a number of angles tonight. Christy McDonald getting expert insight into the judge's decision. Mara McDonald getting reaction from the families of the victims. We're going to begin, though, with Sean Lay, who was inside the courtroom. He joins us now with more. Sean. So much emotion in that courtroom, as you might expect. We've got a lot to get to here from the courts building. You're right. We heard the victim impact statements from family and parents, everyone hanging on every heartbreaking word. We heard from James and Jennifer Crumley, but it was Judge Cheryl Matthews with the final word. The cold truth that shows that they did nothing to address the obvious signs of the deteriorating mental state of mind clearly present within their son. And of course, the very hard truth that shows that they provided their son with exactly what he wanted to use to do what he did. One by one, the fathers, the mothers, the sister, the heartbroken family members of the students murdered in the Oxford High School shooting, getting their chance to speak directly to the shooter's parents. They chose to stay quiet. They chose to ignore the warning signs. The mother of shooting victim Madison Baldwin, her devastating words comparing her nightmare that day to the Crumley's actions. While you were hiding, I was planning her funeral. <laughs> and while you were running away from your son and your responsibilities, I was forced to do the worst possible thing a parent could do. I was forced to say goodbye to my Madison. Both James and Jennifer Crumley also spoke. The prosecution has tried to mold us into the type of parents society wants to believe are so horrible only a school or mass shooter could be bred from. I am sorry for your loss as a result of what my son did. James Crumley turning to speak directly to the parents. The parents say they did not hear the parents take any responsibility. The whole truth has not been told. And I'm with you, Mr. Mayor. I too want the truth. The bottom line, Judge Cheryl Matthews giving the Crumleys the max. These convictions confirm repeated acts or lack of acts that could have halted an oncoming runaway train. Oncoming runaway train could have been stopped. So here's the deal. James and Jennifer Crumley actually in court today, they asked for time served and be placed on a tether not to go to prison. Judge Matthews certainly disagreeing with that, going for the max at six o'clock. She goes into detail about all the evidence that was proven against the Crumleys, why she gave the max, all these details that led up to the shooting. That's at six, guys. Okay, we'll see you then, Sean. Thank you. And as you just saw, emotions ran high in the courtroom, especially for the parents of the victims in this tragedy. And then after the hearing, that emotion spilled out into the hall. Mara McDonald live at the Oakland County Courthouse tonight. There was one key moment there, and it came from James Crumbly. Mara. It sure did, Devin. And, and Sean touched on it in his piece. James Crumbly, at the end of his statement in court, specifically reached out to Buck Muir and said that he essentially stood with these parents of these victims, that he too doesn't feel like he's been told the truth by the Oxford schools, and that he aligns himself with parents in their search for the truth. Well, Devin, Kimberly, let me tell you, that got a real visceral reaction. Take a look. Unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. And just another example of what the victim's parents see as the Crumbly's complete abdication of responsibility here. Steve St. Juliana, Hannah's dad, explains. They are not the victims in this, which is what they continually tried to portray themselves as throughout the whole trial. I'm, I'm sure they were sad people lost their lives. Um, I'm sure they're sad their son is in jail. I'm sure they're sad that they're in jail. That's not what's important. It was important for, for them to recognize that they made mistakes. The judge showed the Crumleys no mercy in sentencing. Is it enough? I felt like it was a just that sentence, um, given the, the magnitude of everything. Um, 
the fact that they didn't, um, the fact that they didn't show that that level of remorse. You know, I mean, till the very end, uh, so that uh, half big um, attempt anyway. Um, it was too little, too late for me. Back here live, I think it's important to point out that there certainly was no joy in this sentence being handed down today. No cheers from anybody. Just sort of a grim acceptance that this is what it is. However. These parents also made it clear today that this is not over. I'm going to show you that coming up tonight at 6. We're live in Oakland County at the Oakland County Courthouse. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara, we'll get back to you then. A key aspect of today's sentencing was the decision by the judge, Cheryl Matthews, to go above the sentencing guidelines. And could that decision play a role in any potential appeal? Christy McDonald has been following this trial from the very beginning. Christy, uh, and I see you have a guest there along with you. Yeah, absolutely, Kimberly and Devin. Of course, Lillian Diallo, longtime Detroit criminal defense attorney. Lillian, let's start. We know what the defense wanted in terms of a sentence, and then you see the judge going above and beyond and meeting what the prosecution wants. What was your reaction to that? They asked for what they wanted, right? And the defense... I don't understand the theory of why they got up there. The clients didn't help the sentence, right? So you had a defense attorney that said, I want the person to live in my backyard, right? And then you had somebody, the other defense attorney was more reasonable. But these facts were so atrocious, right? And then the mom was like, well, I'm still clueless. And the dad is, there's a big conspiracy. They took no responsibility. And that's part of when the judge is looking at things. Remorse is one of the checklists and, and, and just when you're considering a sentence. And there was none. I know, there was on, not one very low. piece of remorse. So for the four people that are dead, there's nothing. There's nothing. Let me ask you this. How do you prepare a client to then address the court as a defendant waiting to get sentenced? How do you tell them to say certain things you should say or shouldn't, knowing full well, Lillian, there's going to be an appeal on this? If, if it was me, now, we, I don't backdoor, you know, uh, defense attorneys, but my clients don't speak at sentencing now, right? Only because there is going to be an appeal. We know it's going to be an appeal on a case like this, right? And their words are going to be used against them. So when you get up there in and Crumbly, James Crumbly was more sympathetic until we heard the threats. He did say, he did say, I'm so sorry for what my son did. Yeah, but then he goes on to, to take zero accountability. You bought the gun. You gifted him the more lethal weapon that caused the mass destruction. Had you had the little der Derringer or the other one, it's not as powerful mm -hmm. as that gun. And nobody looked in that book bag. It, it really is outrageous. So you have the 10 to 15 years. We have the 850 days credit for what they've already served already. When you're looking at this now, um, and there's also this appeals process, when can we start to see this uh, to move forward? So within 42 days, they have to effectuate their appeal. So then they'll get an appellate attorney, and they'll start getting the transcripts. Now, the judge said something, $35,000 for the transcripts right now. That's how much it's going to cost to order the transcripts. And so it's probably going to be a court-appointed um, situation. And there's some very good max attorneys, very good attorneys out there that can handle this. And I, I would expect that it would be a bigger agency that would take this case and, and give it the justice it deserves. Because, you know, the, are there appealable issues? There may be. There may not be. But I know we don't help ourselves when we take no accountability and then we say something as frivolous as we want a tether and a backyard sentence. There are four dead people mm -hmm. for children that did nothing so they asked for this sentence because they did not show not one iota not a sconce of remorse in this particular case and nothing this, and this chapter has now finally come to a close and again what Mara said there is no joy in anything that happened there today but this is finally starting to move forward the crumblies five to ten years in prison that's very latest Lillian thanks so much for your expertise we appreciate it and walking us through this entire process as we have covered these trials we'll send it back to you Devin and Kimberly you got it. All right, Christy. If you missed any of today's hearing, don't worry, we've got you covered. Just head to the home page at clickondetroit.com. We've posted all the emotional victim impact statements in full. If you'd like to listen to them again, you can find them all in the link front and center there right on the home page. Let's get a quick check of the weather here. Uh, a bit of rain showing up right now on uh, some parts of 4D, uh, of exact track 4D radar. Mostly isolated, though, as you can see. Yeah, but that, that threat of rain sure hasn't put a damper on what's turned out to be an absolutely gorgeous day in Metro Detroit. Live Look pictures, at that. Yeah, live pictures <laughs> from our Windsor Sky Camp. Temperatures in the mid-70s. Yeah. Pretty good, Kim.
Not too bad, but you know, it really depends on where you're watching us from. If you're in Brighton right now, it's raining outside your door, but here downtown, it's beautiful. In fact, we've got quite a bit of blue sky. It's warm everywhere though. 76 at Metro, 73 in House, 74 in Pontiac, and also in Adrian. Still hanging on to 76. I was kind of hoping we'd pop up a couple degrees at 5 o'clock, but that didn't happen. The record is 78, so we're just shy of the record. And uh, we may get there at 6, but it's unlikely. I think that, I think we're going to top out right around 76 degrees, 70, which fine, right? Who cares? 74 in Pontiac and also in Ann Arbor. But again, we're close to the record set back in 1931. And we do have that little tiny isolated shower over in Brighton. But there is a lot more rain headed our way for the end of the week. But right now, again, we're just looking at this tiny little area right here. It went north of Ann Arbor, went through Chelsea. And instead of going to Ann Arbor, kind of went a little northeast and now is in Hamburg and in Brighton. So isolated. Don't really worry about it. Don't let it affect your plans tonight. You might get a sprinkle again if you're in that area in Livingston County. Otherwise, dry for the rest of the night. We'll talk about the rain headed our way for tomorrow night coming up. All right, Kim, we want to check in on something that we've been watching very closely in Dexter. A corpse flower. Mm -hmm. It's finally blooming. Take a look at live pictures and you can see the outer portion is starting to expand there and it's also starting to smell. <laughs> we, we put together, that's the telltale, right? Uh, we put together this time lapse video from today. Look how significant the progress has been. Yeah. This is just from today. Pretty crazy. Yeah, look and at you that. can, I know, there it is, opening right up. Uh, you can uh, follow all of this right now on Click on Detroit and Local 4 Plus. And ahead here at 5 30, we're going to hear from the plant's owner to find out what they are doing to keep that horrible, noxious smell at bay. They've worked so hard on this. Six years they've been it, it, tending it, to it like a baby. Maybe they were looking forward to, to the smell because they knew it meant that they <laughs> That's were. That's right. They Their had, work they, was, didn't. They had succeeded. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs>